What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the best advice that we have for slot wide receivers. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like to train with us this off season, check out that very first link in the description below where you can sign up for one of our fifteen two day long, two day long QB and wide receiver camps this off season. We are going to be coming out to San Francisco, Miami, Las Vegas, Charlotte, Port. Portland, Dallas, Nashville, Chicago, Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, and Los Angeles. So fellas, if you're local to any one of these cities and would like to come out and train with us for two whole days of work, check out that very first link in the description below. Again, we'd love to have you out. Very first link below. Let's get started with this video. So we're going to be talking about some of the mistakes, some of the things that slot wide receivers need to focus on, what they want to avoid, and what they want to try to do throughout the course of this video. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is a common mistake that so many slot wide receivers do. And that's not closing enough distance with the DB. So this is a bad example of a slot fade route. And something that you're going to face a lot being a slot wide receiver is off coverage, right? Whether that's a safety who's playing maybe like eight yards off of you, inside shade, maybe he's playing head up. Sometimes you'll maybe get even outside leverage coverage, or you'll get just like a safety walk down and man-to-man -man coverage on you. But slot receivers see a lot of off man and zone. So how do you attack this? So this receiver's running this slot fade. Now he comes up, gives a little move and he runs this slot fade, but that's DB's all over that thing. It's not even close, right? DB's all over and maybe a little bit of a jersey grab, but guys, that's going to happen. That can't be our excuse for why we got locked up in every single situation, right? So when you come up here, we got a DB who's lined up inside shade and he's in off coverage, right? So if he's inside shade, he's there for a reason, fellas. He is there to take away the inside route. He doesn't want us to run a dig, doesn't want us to run a post, not even a slant. He wants to force everything to the outside, which is where his help is. And his help would be the sideline. Now, honestly, personally, I think off-man coverage is a gift. I think wide receivers should beat off-man coverage any time they face it. It shouldn't even be close, but you have to take care of things technically and strategically in order to do that. So our game plan here, if I'm running this slot fade, should be I'm going to make him think that I'm running an inside breaking route. I want him to either hesitate and hold the inside, or I want him to full-blown jump to the inside. So when we close the space with him, or not close the space. When I'm on my route and I'm on my stem, I got to close the space with him. I want to make sure that I'm trying to step on his toes and I want him to think that I am running an inside route. And he does do a good job of selling the inside move. He steps there, his hips, his shoulders, everything turns to the inside. But here's the problem. There's maybe about a yard and a half, two yards of space between us and this DB. So when there's that kind of space, we may even get him to hesitate. We get his feet to be flat. But at the end of the day, fellas, we still got to get to that back pylon and he can cut off the angle when we don't close enough space or get hands and just disrupt the route entirely. So fellas, you have to close the space. Think about it like, for example, like let's say you're not running a slot fade. Let's say you're running a corner route and your corner break is at like eight, like let's say it's at eight yards and you go up to this DB, but you give him a move at like five and then you try to run around him. Guys, he's going to beat you to that eight yard landmark that you have to get to. So we have to make sure that anytime that we are facing this type of look as a slot receiver, we are trying to step on this guy's toes and actually move him to the inside. Because if we don't, he's going to have an easy recovery. DBs work on their recovery, just like how wide receivers work on accelerating out of the break, their releases. Guys, DBs prepare like crazy because they're always guessing. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about this example of a slot wide receiver running this like kind of five yard in slant type of route versus a linebacker who's a little bit bigger and on the more like physical side of things, I guess you could say, right? So this is a situation that a lot of slot wide receivers are faced and that's coach how they ask. I get this question all the time. I'm, I'm a slot receiver. I'm on the smaller side of things. Maybe I'm on the skinnier side of things and I'm going up against linebackers who are just huge physical want to get hands. It's their whole purpose. How do I go about beating that type of linebacker. So we're going to talk about how you guys can do like longer routes, like a corner or post or a dig when he's just sitting right here at five yards, but we're going to talk about this slant first. So number one thing when you're going up against a guy like this is you cannot be afraid of him. You see how this wide receiver goes right at him. He doesn't try to run around him. He doesn't run inside and then get up into his route. He goes right at this guy and right at his toes. Like guys, if you're a slot receiver and you're going up against a bigger physical guy and he's bigger, he's a heavy guy, strong guy, 
We got to be quicker than him. I'm hoping that because you are out of the slot, you are quicker than that bigger physical linebacker type guy. But if we are not quicker than him, it's going to be tough, right? So quickness, speed, agility, those are things that you smaller guys should constantly be working on in the offseason or just any type of downtime during the season to improve those skills. So you see how when he comes off the ball, he doesn't run away from him. He goes straight to him, right? But when he goes to him, he leaves a little bit of space. Now, this is a different situation than the last situation that we talked about. The last situation that we talked about was like off man and it was like a DB, right? Like a safety, a nickel who's guarding us and we could go attack his toes and get close to him. But when we have a bigger physical dude whose job is to reroute me, you guys all have faced that linebacker who's inside shade and playing zone and he just reroutes the hell out of us to the outside. We cannot play his game and that is by getting too close to him because we will never win a hand fight with a dude this size. We never will. We will beat him with my quickness and my speed, like I said. So you want to utilize something called range. Now, what is range? You guys have probably all seen, at least I hope once or twice, like a boxing match or a UFC fight. And they talk a lot about uh, the fighters having a reach, right? So they talk about what's the fighter's reach? Is it 74 inches, 82, you know, 68, whatever it is, right? What's their reach? Because that tells a fighter Like, okay, this guy's got long arms. He's got a long reach. I need to make sure when I game plan for him that I don't get inside of his reach. I jab and I stay away, right? I don't want to get inside the reach. So same idea as a wide receiver. We don't want to get inside his range. We don't want to get inside his reach to where he could get hands on us and reroute us because that's not our game. When you're a slot, you're on the smaller side of things. That's not how we play the position. We got to keep some space in a situation like this. We keep some space. He gives him a fake outside. And again, that wasn't even the greatest move in the world and he's still able to get the this guy to bite because he's not an a- he's not he's an athlete don't get me wrong but he's not the caliber athlete of this guy to the outside where we got to really sell my cuts we just got to make him miss and we just got to give him some kind of quick fake to the outside especially when it's a quick route like let's say it's a quick five yard out say it's a quick slant quick five yard in whatever it is anything short this is how you'd want to play it now, like I mentioned earlier, how would you guys play a route where you had to run like a corner route? Do you be sitting inside shade at like four and you got to break it eight to 10? You got to get up on the route. Same idea, dude. I would go attack him. I'd run at him. I would not be afraid of him. And let's give him some kind of a fake to the inside to get him to jump. But remember, let's keep the range. Then when we give him that fake, let's take the outside release. You just cannot try to run around the dude. If you try to run around him, he's going to shove you. He's going to disrupt timing and he's going to disrupt spacing. Like for example, if this guy's running a hitch and you have to run a corner i can't get rerouted and run my corner route like right next to the hitch because this dude can guard both routes that's why it's important to go at him we give him a move and then we get back up onto my straight stem okay so fellas if you're coming out of the slot and you get that bigger physical guy that is what you should try to emphasize now something that a lot of smart dbs will do whether you have an outside receiver whose split is cut down or whether you have a slot wide receiver what do slot wide receivers like to run a lot of they like to run a lot of drags and they like to run a lot of outside breaking routes. So corners, out routes, slot fades, wheel routes, because again, they're lined up out of the slot. So they have a lot of space to the sideline. So when you face man coverage, don't be surprised if you get a DB who likes to play us outside leverage. So what do I mean by outside leverage? So there's three types of leverage that a DB could have. He could either be inside, he could be head up like this example where he's right in your face, or he could be outside. Now, just because a DB lines up a certain way does not mean that he's going to play a certain way. He could line up head up like this and then jump to the inside. He could line up head up like this and then jump to the outside. And that's ultimately what he does. So let's watch what Justin Jefferson does here. He's running this kind of like deep drag route, if you will. So he comes off the ball, hesitates, see this DB shades to the outside, gives a move at the top, and he's able to create separation. Now let's talk about why this works and why this is important for slot receivers. You have to, when you are facing a press coverage guy, you got to read him and you have to make sure that you are gathering info while you are running your routes. Press releases, moves off the line, how you structure your routes. It's about having a plan based on how the DB lines up. You know, how close is he and what's his leverage? That should be like your initial plan. But sometimes that plan doesn't always work. Like you might come off the ball and this DB changes up his coverage. He might do something totally different. As a receiver, we have to be able to react. So when you're training in the off season, you should be thinking about different reaction drills that you can do. Like, you know, have a plan, work on press releases, but also how can I add a reaction element to this drill? Because that's a big part of the position. So you see when Jefferson comes off the ball, 
obviously when we got a DB who's like two yards away, we want to do what? We want to close the space with him, right? With just like the last two examples we talked about. So he's closing the space. Now on this like deep drag route, he could take an outside release. He could also take an inside release. It really doesn't matter. He could go either way. But as soon as he starts to close the space with him, where does Slay start to shade? outside right so he starts to move he starts the release this db eventually has to show his hand he's not just going to sit there the entire time so he comes off the ball he gets a little hesitation move and he's reading him okay he shades to the outside all right i'm gonna take the inside we attack him he shades to the inside all right i'm gonna take the outside that's the reaction element of this release so fellas slot receivers if you see a guy who's lined up in head up press anticipate that he might shade to the outside, but let's gather some info. We want to attack him. It doesn't have to be slow like this either. We could go fast, but let's make sure that we are ready to react. Slot receivers have to be ready to react because sometimes those DBs, those safeties, nickels, whatever, love to change up their coverage. So now let's look at this next example here. So this is Hunter Renfro. And now this is him against Outside shade, kind of press coverage, if you will, like he's got maybe about like a yard or two of space between him and he's running a dig route, right? So that's another route that a lot of slots like to run. They like to run, you know, like drags, they like to run digs, and then they obviously like to run the outside breaking stuff. So remember we mentioned it. Why is this DB lined up outside shade? Because he's anticipating the outside route. He's lined up outside shade to stop the outside route. He wants to make it uncomfortable on us as a wide receiver. Because it's uncomfortable to run a 10-yard out, a 12-yard corner versus outside shade press. Uncomfortable it's harder than if he was inside shade. Because if he's inside shade, you just take the free outside release. Now, if you have to run an inside breaking route, now some of you might be thinking, hold on, let me back up a second. Some of you might be thinking, well, if he's outside shade, why, why wouldn't we just run a slant? Why wouldn't we just go run a post and just take off and go? Because what do you think he has inside? He's got safety help, right? He's got some kind of help to the inside. He's not going to play outside shade one-on-one -on -one, cover zero. He'll never do that. That would be the dumbest thing ever because you could just go run a drag and there's nobody there. So when you run your routes, if you have an inside breaking route, you have to do something as a slot wide receiver called getting skinny because spacing is so important when you're actually playing real football pad and helmets on, not one-on-ones. And one-on-ones guys just take off and run. It's total BS. They're catching the ball on the opposite hash. That's not real football. Real football is spacing and timing. So let's watch what Renfro does here. So he attacks DB's leverage, takes the inside release, but you see how he gets skinny on the route. He doesn't just keep running over the middle. What I'm talking about getting skinny is like this right here. You see how his hips and shoulders get back vertical. He's getting into the DB's hip and shoulder. I call this getting skinny because Renfro very easily, because this is one-on-ones, could have just taken off and kept running to the inside and breaking. But let's drop a play concept here. Let's say, for example, we have like, you know, let's say this is Renfro fro right here and let's say we have a slot receiver on this side outside receiver on this side let's say we got like a deep post renfro is running this dig let's say the r is running like this hookup route and then like let's say this guy's running you know like some kind of curl route right for just the sake of examples and let's say renfro gets rerouted all the way here but he just takes off and runs he's screwing up the spacing of the whole other side of the passing concept guys you can't do that you have to get back if you take an inside release it's okay but you got to get back skinny you have to get back vertical. So him dipping that shoulder, getting his hips and shoulders back up vertical. When he makes that move, now he's got a window. He's got a window for the quarterback. He didn't just run into safety help and run into other receivers on the field. Slot wide receivers got to understand that. You have to understand that your spacing is important. I get it. We don't want to get jammed. Where Our game, like I mentioned earlier in this video, is not about hand fighting with bigger, stronger dudes. But you got to make sure that you are getting skinny. Don't run away from contact. Get skinny. Let's make windows for my quarterback because that makes his job easier, and that's how I could get more receptions. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, we are coming out to 15 more cities this year for two day, two day long QB and wide receiver camps all the way from Houston, Texas to Portland, Oregon, all over the country. So very first link in that description below, you guys, if you would like to attend, I'll see you guys next time.